hacer nuestra primera presentación magistral de la semana. Está con nosotros el señor Khalil Alali, muy puntualmente, como sabíamos que iba a hacer, llegó a nuestra campus. El señor Khalil es uno de los hombres de mayor respeto en el campo de la investigación tecnológica en los Estados Unidos. Ali Al Ali es el fundador y presidente de Opus Novum, fundación basada en un conjunto de principios que fomentan la cooperación mutua. Además, el doctor Khalil es presidente de Silicon Valley International, una organización sin ánimo de lucro dedicada a la asesoría de empresas y visionarios que quieren acceder al Silicon Valley. Trabaja como Executive Chairman en Senseta, una compañía que se encarga de transformar los datos corporativos de sus clientes en conocimiento, empoderamiento y recursos para los mismos, utilizando tecnologías de captura y análisis de información de gran volumen. Entre sus múltiples proyectos, el señor Ali ha dirigido investigaciones en robótica y controles, acústica para diversos sistemas multimedia y ha colaborado en proyectos con la Universidad de California en Berkeley, la Universidad de Colorado en Boulder y la Universidad de Qatar. Además, es el inventor principal de una tecnología de los Estados Unidos patentada mundialmente relacionada con los sistemas de control avanzados para dispositivos acústicos no lineales, junto con una gran cantidad de invenciones descritas aún más no patentadas. Estamos entonces dando inicio a esta primera ponencia. Me encanta dejarlos con el señor Ali. Bienvenidos, disfrutemos de esta Campus Party 2013 en esta versión Medellín. Mr. Ali. Hello, campuseros. Come on, come on, you can do more. Hello, campuseros. It's better. Hello, Medellín. Hello, Colombia. That's better. Good morning and thank you for having me. It's good to be back. I'm back, second time in Medellín. And um, the subject of what I'm going to talk to you about today, it actually all started here in the building next door. Last year was the first time I come to South America. I've never ever been to South America. I didn't know anything about Colombia. I didn't know anything about Medellín, except the stuff that you hear about with drugs and things like that. So today, I want to share with you why I'm betting on Colombia and why you should too. It's been a wonderful journey over the past year. I actually can't believe in my wildest imagination that I'd be talking to you today. What a wonderful crowd. Look at all this energy. Look at all of you upstairs, downstairs, so active, so vibrant. I felt that energy last year, and I'm feeling it even more so today. So, hello, campuseros. That's better. I'd like to start with a hypothetical question. Many of you have asked yourselves this question before. I asked myself the following question. If you were given the opportunity to go back to being a young person again, as in really young, 5, 10, 14 years old, start all over. Okay, if you were given that opportunity, but you start all over. But then, at the same time, I give you this magic trick, this magic gift, that you get to keep your memories that you have today, all of your experience. So if you're 20 years old, you can go back to being 14, you wonder what the six years, six years of experience, if you're 30 years old, what 16 years? So imagine if you go back to being that age again. Imagine that. Hold on for the question. What would you do? What would you do differently? You know, if you had that chance, if a genie came out of a bottle and said, I give you three wishes, 
and you say, take me back to being young again. What would you do? I'll give you a moment to think about that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you what I did when I had that exercise. It's a pretty powerful question, isn't it? The ability to go back and start all over. You say, hey, I may, I've done a lot of mistakes, or now I know better, and, or what are these things that I was doing back, wasting my time when I was young? People ask themselves these things all the time. So let me share with you the answer that I found for myself. And each and every one of you, when you leave this conference, this amazing place, think about that. All right, think about that. Well, as you can see, it didn't take long for me to figure out there's got to be a better way to what I was doing. There's got to be better ways to what I was doing. So I said, okay, let's set everything aside, throw everything aside, and let's walk this journey. Believe it or not, the journey that got me to stand right here today starts decades earlier. And the past 10 years have more influence than the 10 years before that that brings me here to you today. And you're going to see that there's some logic to the seemingly random or coincidental events. Yes, I, I live in Silicon Valley. I've lived there now more than 10 years. And also, I studied there. So, a total of 16 years in Silicon Valley. Not many people can say that they've been in Silicon Valley and experienced both boom and bust cycles that Silicon Valley has experienced the last two decades. I can say that. I saw the boom of the 90s with the advent of the internet and the boom of 2000 with the advent of search giants like Google, Yahoo, and social giants like Facebook. And we're now seeing the decade of big data analytics and we're experiencing that right now. The giants, the Googles of big data analytics are going to come this decade. But I don't come from Silicon Valley. I'm not an American. I live there, but I'm from Qatar, a tiny little country halfway around the world from here. Let me show you. Thanks to Google, we can show you where this small country is. To think that, so this is Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, home of HP, where it all started. That's where we live right now and that's where we operate. And look how far. It's literally as far away as you can get from Silicon Valley is right there. And to think that from there can come thoughts about innovation, entrepreneurship, like you, it's just unbelievable that somebody like me can go to Silicon Valley and compete head to head with the best of the world that everybody talks about, where the multi-billion dollar companies come from, where all the billionaires of technology come from and succeed over there. So what's the point of all of this? Is to tell you that every single one of you has that opportunity. And the best part of it is, now that the internet has democratized the access of data and effectively flattened our geography, you don't have to be in Silicon Valley to innovate anymore. But I didn't stop. When I graduated from, from Berkeley in Silicon Valley, I went back to Qatar and built an innovation park there, science and technology park. This is a very large park. It was a billion dollars project. We, I wanted to bring back with me a piece of this culture of entrepreneurship. You know, if you go on vacation to Cartagena or somewhere, you bring back a piece, a little bit of sand from the beach. I wanted to bring a little bit of innovation entrepreneurship back with me. And that was the result. That, those were my contributions there. But then the hunger to do more 
brought me back to Silicon Valley. You see this building? There are two of those. For those of you who are in sci-fi, when you're there, it looks like the Starship Enterprise just landed. I mean, it's huge. It's like the belly of the Enterprise. Very exciting times. So yes, even in little country like Qatar, we can have a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship. So you can imagine what this great country, Colombia, the second largest Spanish-speaking country on Earth, 48 million people strong can do with all of your natural resources. So when I came back to Silicon Valley, I started to push the envelope even further. I said, you know, I went to Silicon Valley not to make money. There's a lot of money in Qatar. It's the wealthiest country on earth per capita GDP. I went there to do the kind of things that you just can't do in Qatar. You feel the same way. When you're walking around in Medellin or in Bogota, you wonder, what is it that's in the air that makes these Silicon Valley guys and girls do so much and create so much and innovate? Is there something in the air they're breathing, something in their coffee? After all, their coffee comes from here. So what, what is it that's special? What is it that changes them? So I said, let's do cool stuff. And boy, over the last 10 years, did we do cool stuff. This is a lab that I built for a university and it's gonna show you. It's too bad we don't have the audio. It has some nice music with it, but that's okay. It shows you in three minutes many of the things that we did that people said we couldn't do. And by the way, for those of you who wonder and say, I need money first to do the kind of things, we did this with zero money to start. Zero. We had no money because it was during the collapse of the economies that we did a lot of the work that we did. People were being laid off. It was more about finding the ultimate resource. There's one renewable resource that each and every one of you has that's inside of you. The energy to produce, energy to create change, energy to innovate. You don't need money for that. You don't. It's already inside of you. If you're living and breathing, if you're standing upright and you can see down that there's grass underneath you, you're not laying flat, that means you have that energy. And for as long as you live, it's there. And the best part of it is, unlike, say, in athletics, it continues all the way till you die. So how do we tap into this energy? And this is my example of doing that. We did high-end robotics, unmanned aerial systems, drones, you name it. I worked at NASA and led projects there. It was the most amazing experience. All 10 years, put spacecraft into space put payloads on the space shuttle. It's an amazing experience. But I can tell you that I'm actually even more excited to be here than when I was there. You may be in disbelief about this statement, but I am here after all. I could have stayed working at NASA. I actually stepped down from my position in order to focus on what's going on over here. Look at this antenna. This is actually an antenna that flow is flown in space. Looks like a paper clip that somebody bent out of shape. It's a highly optimized antenna. So, after that journey, and you can see here, this is one of our robots. Take a look at this kit. Take a very close look at this child's facial expression. You see this kind of wonderment, excitement? Wow, this robot is looking at me. This robot is staring right at me. I wonder what it's thinking. I wonder how it works. Each one of you has been inspired by someone or something. You know, if I ask you to list 
the top 10 or even the top 5 wealthiest people on earth, you would have to think about it. Maybe search it, search it online. But if I ask you to list the top 5 or top 10 people who were the most influential in your life, they, the picture snaps right in your head. It doesn't take much for you to figure that out. And you can see here, this child, when this child grows up, you see the flash of inspiration there. And maybe one day run a large robotics company or something. Right there. But yet many of us, like me and you, never had this opportunity when we were children. I never did. But that doesn't mean we don't stop doing the things that we do and inspire the next generation, which is my focus. Inspire you to show you that yes, like me, coming from a tiny country, halfway around the world, can make these things happen. Any one of you can do that. So we did cool stuff. From small spacecrafts, to very special antennas, quantum sensors, rocket propulsion, UAVs, you name it. We were a team. We grew from two people to 30 or 40 people every year doing great things. And to share with you my inspiration, there was this famous astronomer called Carl Sagan. He's famous because he, he had this very popular series on television when I was young. I'm older than you. So you may not recognize this, it was called Cosmos. He was behind putting that gold record that's on the spacecraft that has just left our solar system, Pioneer and Voyager. So he inspired me. Jacques Cousteau, the famous ocean explorer, inspired me too. Alan Shepard, first American in space. I met him and I was awestruck and then after that, I decided that astronaut was the number one job. All of that, when I was that young age, like this child right here, it hit me. And you can even feel the effects of these people through this talk right now. So it's, they live forever, these role models. We did some complex simulation. We took our robots to deserts like in Atacama and Chile. We created companies that build robots for the moon. And what was really cool, because in California we have earthquakes, you can see my little robot dragging this very large ground penetrating radar rig with magnetometers on it. We could map an area and tell you what's underneath it automatically. And that's led us to do the following. It was really, really amazing. I get this strange phone call from an investigator for the city of uh, Los Altos. And that's always trouble, whether it's your fault or they need your help with some crime or something. And they wanted our help to solve a murder crime. Some guy killed his girlfriend in a car. At the time, it was 19 years ago. Now it's some 22 years ago. And they couldn't find any evidence to convict this guy. They knew it was him, but there was no evidence. No, no car, no weapon, no body, nothing. 19 years. And they gave up, so they came to us. They figured these, these people at NASA and Sinceta and Carnegie Mellon can help us crack this. So we formed a collaboration, all for free. And we sent out our robots out there. In one day, in one day, we found the evidence that solved the crime. Just the power of technology applied to make the world a better place. That's always the focus. The famous anthropologist Margaret Mead warned us that if we don't master technology, if we don't master technology, we may use it for things other than to make the world a better place. That's always the intent of what we want to do and the intent of every single one of you. You can see there, no car, no gun, no body. And we found it. And we solved that crime. It made the headlines. 
the NASA administrator sent us thank you letters. And it was all over. You can just Google um, NASA cold case murder and you'll read all about it. But I'd like to remind you with that sentence I had. Remember, there is another way. In your mind, you're thinking, look, I can program like the best of them. After all, a very, very skilled programmer, software developer, has so much power in their hands. We can see that. We can see that today with WikiLeaks. We can see that today with NSA cracking, uh, cracking code. And we can see that even 13 years ago, almost 13 years ago, when the folks attempted to encrypt DVDs, DVD movies, and would you believe it took exactly seven lines of Perl to crack the DVD code? I'd like to use that as a definition for the word eloquence. Eloquence is cracking billions of code with seven lines of Perl. And for those of you who are um, superhero fanatics, with great power comes great responsibility. So, what did we do with that? We started an organization called Opus Novum. If you know Latin, you know that Opus Novum means new work. It's actually, think of it as like a, a sexier, more modern interpretation of gathering people who are like-minded organization that brings and attracts people. This, was a, this is how we did this. It's an alliance based on a set of principles that fosters mutual cooperation. It's not I gain at your expense, it's we all gain. How do we do that? How do we do that? And by the way, in my speech, keep in mind that the things that we have created are things that you can do too, these things, just to see the multitude of things that we did in just the past 10 years, should empower you to believe deep within you that your potential is limitless, that you have limitless and infinite potential. So here's a little flow chart. We believe that if you bring good people, put them in quotes for now, Create an environment where there's open mind share. Open. Open is key here. Share is also key here. Create an environment where there's mutual collaboration. That's the environment that then creates impact. Actually, if you read in history, you will see that every single major eff uh, effort started this way. So this great US of A that I live in right now, this 300 plus million people, most powerful country on earth, started with a small group of people in Europe, a handful, inside, enjoying a drink, and asking themselves, can we do more? And they started this country. Just a handful. It still boggles me. But then let's deal with this quote. I'd like to deal with this quote because it's a very fiery quote. You know, we all have our own, um, we all have our own interpretation of what's good and bad, good and evil, white or black. So one has to be careful. Religion is one way to classify good people versus bad people. But we can see where that takes us. So let's come up with a, a better understanding of who are these good people. But first of all, once we, once we know who they are, how do we find them? And how, and, 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 and how do we attract them? How do we bring them to the table? Okay, so you have a bunch of good people. How do you bring them and say, come, let's do this together? So we created a, what, what I call a honeypot, an attractor, a magnet, a center of gravity. It's a set of principles. It's not cash. It's not money, it's a set of principles, it's a mindset that says, here are the principles that I adhere to. 
here are the principles that I personally believe in. And we wanted to keep them short. Margaret Mead also said, never underestimate a small, determined, committed, thoughtful citizens to change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. This is a recipe to bring about a small group of people who have a certain worldview, and they say, this is what we want to do. You'd be surprised what we came up with. It took us a long time to think about this. In all of our dealings, we place trust and loyalty first. That's the bedrock. Forget about contracts. If I don't have a firm handshake with you, I don't trust you. That's human-to-human -human interaction. That's just the nature of things. Most, most interactions are built on trust and loyalty. We know that. You know what's interesting? Despite what most people are, lead you to believe, we have inside of us the ability to give first before we take. We do have it inside of us to share. You can see that. Where can you see that? Remember that picture of the child that I had earlier? That child is ready to share with you. Well, what happened when this child turned 30? Why are they protective and covering their pockets? And What happened there? It's a kind of conditioning. It's this conditioned awareness that we're in that tells us to be protective rather than to be sharing. So we wanted to change that. We wanted to go back to being children again. The next one goes back to the question that I asked you about the people who inspired you, your mentors, your teachers, maybe your parents. You have to honor that. And not only that, you have to pass it on. So as you grow older, you have to pass it on to the next generation. It is actually today humanity's largest supercomputer and also humanity's largest storage facility of information. How do I know that? We have records that date thousands of years of knowledge and information that has been collected and still much of it is not stored on hard drives. I can assure you if it is on hard drives 10 years from now you won't be able to read it. So you have to honor that tradition. The next one, which most of you believe in, because of the nature of Campus Party, is to seek a collaborative unity. Bring in a bunch of people together, here's what we want to do. We got to do this, 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 because we want to do this. You don't see people saying, well, I need to see a paycheck first. They'll say, let's go, I've got my laptop, let's go, let's roll. So then we roll, we go. And then the benefits come later, maybe we start a company. I like to apply social norms over market norms. What does that mean? If I meet any of you, it's not because I'm meeting you because of who you are in terms of your business title. It's because of what's inside of you. I want to know you as a human, not as a business card. I want to remember you as a human. You have a family. What's your passions? What are your fears? All of that. That's what I want to know. I call it nonlinear interaction. It's very nonlinear. We, the modern world, not the ancient world, the modern world has forgotten some of these teachings and we want to bring them back. Here's one that uh, really resonates when you see greedy bastards taking at the expense of other people. They don't care if children have nothing to eat as long as they make their bottom line. Well, we got to stop that. We favor wealth creation. There's still so much we can leverage from the earth and do it sustainably to create more for all. If this pizza is this small and we're fighting over 20% of it, why not instead of fighting over that 20%, instead make a much bigger pizza, which we can do. What's the proof? this event. If it weren't for the internet revolution, we wouldn't be having an event like this. And before the internet revolution in the 90s, as a matter of fact, I was there when I was in college at Berkeley, at the heart of Silicon Valley. And I had people come to my lab. And I remember showing them Netscape in its original form, when there were only maybe a thousand pages on Earth, and most of them were from NASA. 
and you could hear comments of people saying, oh, I don't think anything will ever come of this. <laughs> you must be laughing because I am, because I'm thinking, boy, were they wrong. It's absolutely hilarious how wrong they were. They were so wrong that the vast majority of new jobs being created are exactly in that sector. And I can tell you there's more to come and it's not necessarily in this revolution. So wealth creation. Think about wealth creation. And then when you wake up in the morning, every morning, despite hardships, the best thing you can do is say to yourself, it's either going to be a good day or it's going to be a great day. And you refuse to believe otherwise. So when you think of those two, you think that you're going to be a positive agent of change in everything that you do. It doesn't take much, by the way. People lead us to believe that we need millions of dollars, billions of dollars to make this change, solve this problem, solve the water problem, solve the pollution problem. Let me tell you, for those of you who are technically inclined, a small change integrated across time, the integral has a very big effect. It may, you may not see it tomorrow, but 30 years from now you'll feel it. As long as that change is consistent, you help someone. You know, um, it's often said that compassion for people it's like shining a light. So when you shine a light for someone, some of that light shines on you too. So I want you to think about that. Think about the change that you make every day in what you do, whether it's technology tools like we did, doesn't matter. But at the end of it all, this is the objective. This is what we really want. We want to create structures that support people, not the other way around. When you go and work for a company, you see just the phrase, work for a company? It's more about the company working for you. It's more about the company extracting the most out of you to affect that change. You are that company. You are that organization. Without you, they don't exist. But with all the marketing and the sales pipelines and everything like that that we deal with all the time, they lead you to believe that, they lead you to believe that yes, this company without you can remain as an entity without anybody there. That's not true. If everybody walks away from their jobs in a company, the company stops. Structures supporting people, not the other way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this here so you can see so you can see what this organization is about but you can look it up online but then don't get too carried away about this particular organization get carried away about the fact that when we say let's make change we st we started today let's just go all right now to shift the focus and sharpen it to here I get this question, I get the following question a lot. When I speak to my Silicon Valley colleagues, this is what they ask me. What are you doing there? Why are you going there? What is there? Isn't it a place full of drugs and you may get abducted or something like that? That's what I used to think. Yeah, yeah. When, uh, when, uh, MTech invited me, MTech Columbia last year invited me to speak. I was worried, I was thinking, hey, are there going to be people watching, you know, looking over me and so forth, because that's what Silicon Valley folks believe. They're still stuck in the past, when Pablo Escobar was still alive. That's where they were stuck. They didn't know the world has changed, and Colombia has changed. This is what I tell them, and I really, really believe that. There is no monopoly on good people around the earth. There are good people everywhere. Talented people everywhere. Smart people everywhere. I know that. I come from a small country. I don't come from Silicon Valley. So I really believe that. I've seen it. Whether it's in India, whether it's in Colombia, China, you name it. 
there are good people everywhere. But then, Colombia has actually done something about this. Colombia now has the necessary ingredients, really, really for world-class innovation. When I say world-class, I'm not talking about creating something and then selling it here in the local market. I'm talking about you would be heard worldwide. So we wanted to test this theory. And I really believe, I really do believe, that the next big thing, when you hear the words big thing, is coming from here. Don't be surprised if I stand here before you a year or two from now and we start celebrating successes. Oh, this is the birthplace of so-and-so. After all, very few people know around the world that Colombia is a pioneer in aviation. Second oldest airline in the world was born here. Why? Because you have this very special topo topography that is easier to fly over than to drive over. Maybe even cheaper. So that creates a different vantage point, a different perspective on what to innovate. How, how can a person sitting in Silicon Valley in nice weather, very flat, know what a Colombian really needs if they've never been here, if all they think about is that they're drug dealers and everything everywhere. How are they going to innovate for all of you? How are they going to write the apps on your phones to tailor to your needs? How did Tapsy get born? Just like that. Just like that. So I was invited to speak at MTech. I'm sure some of you have been to that event. Let me get a show of hands. Who has been to MTech Columbia last year? Wow, not as many. There were a lot of people. There were almost a thousand people there. And I spoke there. For those of you who were there, you may have seen my talk. MTech is, stands for Emerging Technologies, and it's hosted by MIT. This is their international roadshow. They go from country to country. They went to Spain. And then they they uh, decided to go to Medellin. I spoke in Spain, and then they liked what I had to say, and they said, hey, you're a very popular guy. You're ranked high on your list of speakers, so we'd like to invite you again. Where? Medellin. Where is that? I never heard of it. So I came. This is also the place where they give an award called TR35. TR stands for Technology Review. 35 is age. Any innovator who has a product or a service that is impacting humanity, that's 35 years of age or younger, applies for this award and they give it every year. Founders of Facebook and Google have, uh, have received this award, so it's very prestigious. Well, last year, this guy won the award. This guy from Colombia. He has this really cool company, does 3D topographical mapping using these drones and UAVs. And I was fascinated. So he attended my speech, and after that, he started to ask me, you know, it's wonderful you talk about how we have principles, how we do things ethically. It's wonderful to see this type of thought process, and you, can, and you claim that you can even make money out of this. So how do you do that? I'd like to do that, he said. You know, the cloud of corruption is moving away from us in Colombia. We're tired of it. We can create prosperity without it. So, of course, you naturally like a person like that when you hear him talk like this. So I had lunch with him. We were fascinated about the things that he had to say. And I decided right then and there to make a bet. So as soon as I went back, as soon as I returned, I spoke to my partner, Petter, and I said, I have went to this fascinating place. He's never been here either during that time. And it blew my mind. I was even fascinated by these Jaromo trees with the silver leaves and everything. All kinds of things. The weather, being in the mountains, and fascinated by what Cesar did. So then he was in the middle of raising funds in a venture capital uh, round, selling half his company to a venture capital firm. 
So I called him up and I said, I have a better deal for you. He was about to sign the paperwork. I'll buy your whole company, I said. I have a holding company. I'm going to buy your whole company. <clears throat> Let's start this. So we bought his company. We bought the Silicon Valley company that did the murder case, that solved the murder case, because he specializes in aerial drones. That company specializes in ground vehicles, so we thought it was a good marriage. And we repurposed them to sit on three mega trends that each and every one of you has that potential to sit on today. Mega trend number one, big data analytics. Everybody knows that. That's the next wave. It's not what is collecting the data. It's not categorized data. It's what you do with the data. It's how you make sense of disparate sets of data. Mega trend number two, UAVs and drones. That industry is changing. Lots of companies, you're going to see lots of demos. I see lots of drones around here. Mega trend number three, which you play a key role in that, this workforce boom, this infrastructure boom and the workforce boom in, in Latin America, one of the youngest in the world that will compete with countries like China. Millions of people entering the workforce. So we repurpose them. So you see, what started as a very simple encounter at a conference, lunch and dinner, enjoying what's special about Colombia, turned into a very serious proposition. You see, just like that. Absolutely just like that. So we brought these two companies together. Very unique, by the way, in Silicon Valley, I'm not aware of any, any company that was born by putting a Silicon Valley company and a Columbia company together from day one. So that wasn't easy to do. Our lawyers scratching their heads, what's SA and what's SAS, trying to figure out how to do share exchanges and all that. But we figured it out. We started in October of last year, precisely a year ago, this process. And by April, we were married. And we were working together. And we were growing. And we have investors from all over the world who have invested in this company. They've never invested in Colombia ever before. As a matter of fact, most of them never invested even in technology. And look at the net results. Read the accolades that we're getting in the press. We're getting a lot of attention. Look at the last one. That one is very powerful. You see, what started as a very simple encounter ended up with a sentence that says that we might change Colombia forever. And if that's not an inspiration to each and every one of you, some of you already well under your way to do that, I don't know what is. It still boggles my mind to figure all this out and see the results. So it starts in Colombia. It's got a Colombian heart. But we are a global company and we are going global. <clears throat> this company, while it started here, is not going to stop here. And I'm sharing with you this journey. <clears throat> and I'm honored to be part of this process, not just for this company, but also the process for Colombia in general. When I see a young, vibrant energy that I can feel from you today, my instinct is to say, let's get the most out of this to improve our lives. Let's not waste it. So this is what we do today. <clears throat> you can see these demonstrations online. And also you can see more details at 3 o'clock today when my CEO Cesar, he's my CEO now, the person who you saw his picture, he's going to give a more detailed, highly technical presentation about some of this know-how that we have. Suffice it to say that we laugh when mapping people talk about, oh, you know, our 3D maps are very accurate. One meter resolution or three meter resolution. We have a map of Guayaquil in Ecuador that's between one and three centimeter resolution in three dimensions, all 26 square kilometers. That was a contract. You can see it right there. And the amount of information we can extract out of that 
is nothing short of impressive. Here you see a little flyby of our 3D reconstructed data. We do it at very low cost. We fly all over Colombia and we map. This is whether to go on mapping apps on your phone, whether to go to architectural firms to build the buildings. We own a substantial portion of the Colombian market when it comes to this 3D mapping. Now notice that this, co this company is not technically a startup. The idea started, but we bought two existing companies. One from Colombia that was operating many years, and one from Silicon Valley is operating since 2005. I present to you the idea of a scale-up. If a startup is too risky for an investor, you can start with a scale-up. That is, you find an existing group of people who already have a company, and you infuse them with a new direction and new investment. And maybe join them with other companies and take them to the next level. Because there's already cash flow. There's already products being sold, like this 3D reconstruction that we do every day. We have contracts upon contracts. But we're going to the next level. Don't get me wrong. We're not just staying there selling our widgets like that. We can even show you all of the future planning. You want to plan a future lot? We can show you that. Lots of things we can do. This, by the way, is not a demonstration. This is an actual deliverable that we deliver to a customer. And over time, we can monitor what's going on. We can classify the objects that we see. Very powerful technology. This, I'm sure, is near and dear to you, optimizing traffic. When I fly to Bogota and drive through there, at least in Medellin, it's a little bit better. In Bogota, the traffic is impossible. And I come from California, and California is known to be impossible with traffic. Right? So it's really terrible there. I've never seen a country where if you have the wrong license plate, you don't get to drive on that road. It's that bad. So what if we gave you an ability using very low cost cameras, even the ones that are already installed, to be able to classify traffic and redirect it? We're already doing that actually with buses. We have a contract to work on optimizing bus traffic. It's a pilot project. If it works, we get more. Because while we still wait to build more roads, roads take a long time to build we can still optimize the flow of traffic, especially in disparate data sets. Everybody knows that if there's a football game happening in a town in Colombia, traffic changes. But then how much does the traffic change if Colombia is playing Argentina and Argentina, for example? In Colombia, how does the traffic in Colombia change? It does change because everybody goes home to watch the game. So how do you optimize traffic to that knowledge? That's our specialty. We bring these disparate data sets and connect them by low cost means. This is a, it's our supercomputer that does this with our very special algorithms. And we got into the retail side of things as well. This we're getting a lot of attention to. Much attention has been given regarding what we call retail logics. The ability to determine how to optimize retail outlets, how to optimize where the product placement should be because we can tell what you're looking at and who you are. Are you male, female, child? You can see when it comes to even just foot traffic flow, we can optimize that. It's quite impressive. And we have a few contracts working on exactly that. The objective is to make it better for everyone. Because remember, Opus Novum's principles. You also have to realize that this company is partly owned by this organization. And as such, Sincera, embodies within it the principles I shared with you. When we look for employees, investors, owners, you know, we turned away money from people that just didn't fit what we're looking for. We're not looking for people who say, oh, I just want, I, you need to make me money. Here's money so you can make me money. That's not the point. Or I'm coming to this job because I just want to get paid. That's also not the point. The point is, is we come together, we do get paid, we do make money, but that's an interesting side effect. So I ask you, are you excited yet?
You know that guy from Iron Maiden? He's going to be speaking. You better have a better response than that. I mean, he comes from the rock world where people are jumping and screaming and fireworks and everything. So are we excited yet? Yeah. That's better. That's much better. The reason I got the opening keynote is to set the mood and the flavor of this event. Campus party is well known worldwide. Large following. Thousands of people show up. And I heard last night some of you had some very interesting accommodation issues. Let's put it mildly. Shows your dedication. Sleeping on floors and everything. Really committed people. But the theme of this event, Medellin, the number one most innovative country in the world. It's amazing how far this city has come. That's one theme. They're here to celebrate that. And that's a success story. What a turnaround story. Celebrate the success. You're a part of it. You're the reason why this notion, this idea, this award, this recognition was given to you. The second part, which is a more generic part, as mo many, many conferences that I go to talk about, is innovation and entrepreneurship. You hear that? It's like some kind of magic set of words. Let's do innovation entrepreneurship. Let's give some tax breaks and so forth to innovation entrepreneurship. I don't know what these kids are all about. I don't know what a hashtag is. Just, just give them innovation entrepreneurship. Let's just keep going and maybe something will come out. Maybe two, three kids will show together and they create the next Facebook. Who knows how Facebook got there in the first place? I don't understand this social stuff. You hear that a lot with policymakers, don't you? At least they have an email address. So those are the themes of today. And those are the themes of the event. But I don't want you to go and think that these are some kind of, oh, only Silicon Valley can do these things. You know, one of the fellows of my organization moved to Atlanta. And he said, Atlanta and the US and Georgia, he said that there are more opportunities there to support innovation than they are in Silicon Valley. He's, raising a, he's got a fund, he's raising money right now. He's got support from the city. So what does that tell you? You have a city right here, all around you. Look at all the logos of the sponsors and the support. Each and every one of them trying to help you. Your challenge is to articulate to them what it is that they can help you with. It's not just buildings. It's not just iPads. It's not just a good internet connection. It's not just tax breaks. It's not just an excellent educational infrastructure, health infrastructure, it's all of that. So as you're walking around and hearing all of the speakers, keep in mind that innovation entrepreneurship happens anywhere at any time. And it's been happening for thousands of years. Silicon Valley did not invent fire or the wheel. That's innovation. Maybe old, old school now, but then that's a few thousand years from now, they can look at your iPad like we look at old wheels and fire and things like that. These ancient people. So I'm excited to be here. And as you are interested in our journey, I urge you to follow us at sensetta.com and come in and participate, either as a Colombian who is curious, because curiosity is always great, either as someone who wants to jump in and work with us, because that's the point. The point is to create infrastructure to take what you already have and make it global. That's the point. It's like a machine, it's like an engine. Or you may be interested in becoming an investor with us. We have a round that's open for another week. We raise a lot of money and it's not about the money. 
we look for good owners of our company. That's the hallmark of good entrepreneurship. A base of innovation, a culture of innovation, good people, like how I mentioned earlier, good infrastructure with supporting owners and investors. It's really that simple. Although it's not easy to sign the check, as many of you find out. Somebody, everybody has an idea when they wake up in the morning. Oh, I got an idea. I'm sitting here brushing my teeth. Oh, you know, what if I did this this way? Or what if I move this plug that way? And what if I had an app that can count how many seconds I have left to brush my teeth? You know, lots of ideas like that. But it's one thing to have an idea. It's another to actually turn it into a product or service that somebody wants to buy. Also, look for your mentors as models. It's the one thing that's special about Silicon Valley. When people ask me about the air, you know, can we bring Silicon Valley to here? You don't. You don't bring it to here. It's like saying, it's like saying, uh, Silicon, like, it's like saying bringing in and growing coffee in Silicon Valley. Or Guayavana in Silicon Valley or something like that. It just doesn't work like that. It's all inside of you. It's all from within you. And it's all about the modeling. When a young guy comes to Silicon Valley, he jumps right in, looks for a model, somebody who's been successful in Silicon Valley, and starts following and doing everything they do. That's why they succeed. All of those famous people that we talk about today, that's where they started, or most of them. So I leave you, I leave you with excitement to be here. I leave you with the thought that I made a bet on this country, and any time, any time, any time, somebody gets, starts talking about, oh, Colombia, isn't this where all the drug, this, this, and that? I look at them and I said, I made a bet on this country, and I'm sticking to it. And they stop talking. They look at me like this, going, okay, there's no changing this guy's mind. We just started. I almost didn't want to come here. Look where I am right now, running a company with a Colombian heart. Unbelievable. People thought, well, what happened? That was only been a year. What just happened? And it went by just like that. And I'll come back and talk to you again when you realize that Sensera has become a global platform for big data analytics. We have very special machinery and extremely talented people. And you're going to hear a lot about that today. So be excited with the thought that you actually have ingredients to succeed in innovation and entrepreneurship better than most countries today. It is actually so. It's why I have to travel. You know, I have to wake up at 3.30 in the morning to catch my plane at 6 o'clock in the morning. I actually woke up at, earlier than that. I left at 3.30. And I arrive here at 8 p.m. That's not a short flight. There are two, one connection. So it takes a lot to come here and to take that risk tells you how much I really believe. You want to know how people react? Start a business with them. Thank you for that. I'm honored and humbled to be here. And I look forward to meeting some of you in this next event. So go out there and be fearless. Be absolutely fearless. You can do it. Thank you.